guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to do a really fun video all about wedding fragrances because if you guys are following me, you know I've been preparing for my wedding and my marriage. So of course, as the fragrance perfume princess, there's a lot of pressure on me to make sure I'm wearing the right perfume for the day. And like, literally that's the first question people ask me, they're like, what perfume are you gonna wear on your wedding day? So I've been, you know, looking around, trying a lot of my favorites, and just going to my perfume library. And I've pulled out a lot of my favorite fragrances that I think would be really beautiful to wear on your wedding day. And before we get started, I just wanna remind you guys to please subscribe to my channel and like this video if you enjoy it. It really helps me boost my video up and hopefully more people get to watch it. You know the drill. So the perfumes I selected for my recommendations really have a lot of notes that I think would be really nice to smell and for on yourself as well as like have your guests smell on your wedding day. Typically wedding season, across the globe is usually anywhere from like April, May, all the way to September. So I feel like those kind of like light florals with a little touch of a nice base, maybe something ambery, woody to dry down really nice. A little bit of gourmand as well is like the perfect combination. That's my opinion, of course. You can wear whatever makes you feel fabulous, but I just wanna share the perfumes that to me scream amazing bride. So I am going to just start in no particular order. I pulled together some of my favorites. I did pick some Kaylee's, of course, but a lot of my favorite fragrances that I've been wearing for ever. Like these are staples in my collection. I cannot live without them. And I just think they are so perfect for a wedding. So I'm going to start with this fragrance because it could possibly be my favorite in this collection. This is Vert Malachite from Giorgio Armani Privé. And this fragrance, I probably have gone through, I don't know, maybe five, six bottles. And I actually have none left in here. <laughs> oh, I do have a little bit. Oh, there is some. Oh my God. Mm. Oh my God. This is such a beautiful fragrance. And I think also for myself, because there's just so many memories attached to this fragrance because I've worn it for so long, it just makes me feel so happy. It was created by a legend in the perfume industry, the amazing Fabrice Pellegrin. He is incredible and he actually works with my fragrance house, Fermanish. I love a lot of his creations. He's just so talented. And this is a woody aromatic white floral fragrance. And you guys know I love white floral fragrances. It has top notes of bitter orange, petite grain, middle notes of jasmine, sambac, ylang ylang, pink pepper, which you guys know I love as well, and a dry down of lily, vanilla, and benzoin. I definitely recommend this fragrance. To be honest, this entire fragrance brand collection, like the Privé collection from Armani, in my opinion, is really beautiful, very high quality, super long lasting, so I definitely recommend checking them out and definitely check out this fragrance if you can. Love it so much. What should I talk about next? I don't even know. <laughs> I'm like, they're all so good. I want to talk about them all at the same time. Okay, so the next one that I'm gonna spotlight is Hypnotic Poison by Dior. And again, this is a classic fragrance. It's been out forever. I've been wearing it on and off forever. It's a staple in my collection. And I just love this fragrance. I think it's very soft yet strong at the same time. And it's definitely very memorable, very long lasting. So this fragrance is an OG. This was launched in 1998. I think I started wearing it around like my later university days. So like around 2007, 2008, but I love it. Like once I started wearing it, I was like, I understand why it's such a like top seller, why it's so popular and why it's been around for so long. It's extremely, extremely memorable and very long lasting. Mm, I love it so much. So this scent is considered to be an ambery vanilla scent and it has top notes of coconut, plum and apricot and middle notes of Brazilian rosewood, jasmine, caraway, tuberose, rose, lily of the valley, and dry down of vanilla, almond, sandalwood, and musk. So this was created by two noses, Annick Dinardo and Christian Folier. We're gonna put it up on the screen because you know I can't pronounce things very well. Definitely a beautiful fragrance. Love it, love it, love it. The next fragrance I'm gonna spotlight is by a brand called Bois 1920, Essential Tuberose. And this is also another bottle that I've gone through multiple times. It's really niche too, so it's very hard to find. So every time I'm getting like close to the end, I'm like, 
I get nervous and I go try to buy it again before I finish it because I just love it so much. It's really exceptional. This fragrance was launched in 2013 and the nose is Enzo Galadri. Galadri. Sounds like Galadari. That's like a really popular last name of like a prominent business family here in the region, but no. Galadri. It's a floral fragrance, a beautiful white flower, tuberose overdose. And I personally feel like tuberose is a note that really takes somebody who has a lot of confidence to wear because it is really powerful, very, it's distinct, you know? It's something that really you have to carry this with confidence. It's not for everyone, but whoever it is for are people who are going to love it so much, including myself. So the top we have tuberose, peach, and coriander. The middle we have coconut, jasmine, heliotrope, and orange blossom. And the dry down we have benzoin, iris, musk, sandalwood, and patchouli. Honestly, beautiful, powerful, long-lasting, like all the fragrances I'm gonna talk about today. For the next fragrance, I would like to spotlight the amazing Louis Vuitton Rose de Vent. This was created by the legendary Jacques Cavillet, someone who I'm dying to work with, but he's exclusive to LVMH, which has broken my heart because I've been dying to work with him since I fell in love with fragrances, which is like over a decade ago. Mm. Honestly speaking, I think Louis Vuitton fragrances are possibly one of the best brands in the entire world when it comes to fragrance. Like the power, the longevity, you know, the sillage, it's just insane. He's, he's so amazing. He's so gifted. Kind of hate you for not like being able to work with you. Ah, if you ever see this video, call me. <laughs> I really wanna work with you so bad. This fragrance was launched in 2016, and this is not my first bottle, something that I've worn repeatedly. And in the top we have peach, green notes, black currant. In the middle we have rose de mai, rose, Turkish rose, and iris. And in the dry down we have white musk, cedar, pepper, orris root, and violet leaf. So it's definitely like a rosy overdose with lots of interesting, unique notes to kind of make it sharp. Like for me, I find orris and iris extremely sharp and powerful. And I think that's what I kind of like in this fragrance. It's like not your typical rose at all. And it is extremely long lasting. I'm gonna just, I know I've sprayed everything on me, but <laughs> might as well keep going. Okay, and next we are going to spotlight the classic, the legendary Coco Chanel Mademoiselle. Woo! Okay, this is a flanker. This is Le Privé, so this is like a newer version of it, but I really recommend either the original or any of the flankers because it's really such a beautiful scent. I haven't worn this in a while. I'm just spray it. Don't know where. It's all good. For me, this really reminds me of when I first moved to Dubai and it was like the first time I meet people who spend a lot of money on perfume because where I lived, people did not spend hundreds of dollars on perfume. So I was like, oh my God, they're wearing Chanel perfume. What is wrong with them? Okay, I love it. <laughs> as soon as I smell this, like I remember my university, it was the American University of Sharjah and like people really like, it was so inspiring how much effort they put in their like outfits, their fragrance, their makeup, their everything. It was really like over the top, but I loved it. I'm gonna share the notes of the OG Coco Chanel Mademoiselle. It was launched in 2001 um, by the nose Jacques Collège. It's an amber fragrance and it has top notes of orange, mandarin orange, bergamot, and orange blossom, so lots of orange notes. Middle notes of Turkish rose, jasmine, mimosa, ylang ylang, and a dry down of patchouli, white musk, vanilla, vetiver, tonka bean, and opapanex, which is a beautiful note, which I learned about in my favorites training. It's a beautiful, like, gourmand, delicious, resinous note. This is a gorgeous fragrance. Even this flanker is absolutely beautiful. I think another thing very special about wearing something that's so classic, like these fragrances that I'm sharing today, is that most likely they'll be continued so you can still smell this fragrance in 10 years where if you wear something more trendy, it might not be around. So it'll be harder to like re-smell and like go back on your memories, but she's a classic. She's not going anywhere. She's legendary. So for my Kayali selects, I'm gonna actually share them all together because I actually feel like if you layer them together, it'll be really nice. So of course the first one I'm gonna pick is our Deja Vu White Flower 57, which is a 
beautiful white floral explosion. Honestly speaking, when I created Deja Vu, I really had a wedding fragrance in mind. Like I was kind of like going through new romance and I was like, I really want to create a romantic, beautiful fragrance. I mean, when do I know I'm such a like hopeless romantic? To me, this was really that white floral, perfect fragrance for a wedding. And it has beautiful top notes of pear, white nectarine, and gardenia, and in the middle we have some beautiful jasmine, we have tuberose, we have orange blossom, and we have a beautiful dry down of vanilla, patchouli, cashmere woods, and sandalwood. So it's a really beautiful fragrance. To me, it's a white floral in your face, and definitely I think the, the note that's the most prominent is the jasmine and maybe the orange blossom. Oh, I love this one. We're gonna spray. Oh my god, I have perfume everywhere, which I love. <laughs> I am not complaining at all. Oh my god, <laughs> so good. Okay, so of course I'm gonna have to spotlight our amazing hair mist because I think you should be wearing perfume or hair mist in your hair every day because why not? And also like your hair just holds on to fragrance much more than your skin. So I'm a big believer in spraying your hair and also your clothing. This formula is amazing. It doesn't have alcohol, so it's really nourishing to your hair. We've added four incredible oils to make sure that your hair is super nourished. We have aloe vera, we have camellia oil, we have panthenol. It's just an amazing, beautiful formula. Spray, because it's actually, I haven't sprayed anything in my hair today, except for a spray. Mm, so that's beautiful. So I think pairing up these two together is amazing. And then I've also selected our incredible Utopia Vanilla Coco 21. And to me, this is almost a flanker of Deja Vu. Like they have a lot of similar notes. I never intended to create, like recreate Deja Vu at all, but they are very similar and they actually pair well, really well together. Absolutely gorgeous. This is kind of a more tropical, kind of a more island version of Deja Vu. Together, it's absolutely beautiful. Let me just, oh my God. Mm. Oh my God, so good. I did also want to spotlight our musk fragrance because to me, musk is definitely the most like second skin, glassy, chic. If you're looking for something that's not too overpowerful, something that, you know, is a little bit more subtle, I would definitely recommend our musk. Or if you are wanting something powerful, you can layer this under your perfumes and it gives you a really nice base. But our musk is definitely a legendary and it was created by a master perfumer, Harry Fremont, who's retired now, but he, this was one of his last creations and he is a musk genius. Actually, he's just a perfume genius, he's amazing. But this is definitely something, if you do like musk and you like more subtle scents, this is something I definitely would recommend for your wedding too. If you like more powerful ones, this on its own is definitely not the one for you because it is something that becomes like a second skin fragrance over time. So you have to keep reapplying. But as a base, it's really beautiful. The thing is about musk, it really makes your fragrance really long lasting. So if you set your base, you just spray musk all over and then you apply your other fragrances, it will definitely make it last a lot longer. And if you apply a body oil or a lotion underneath that first, it'll be even more long lasting, which I definitely recommend doing on your wedding day. So next I have to spotlight Baccarat Rouge by Maison Francis Kirjian, I always call him MFK for short. This fragrance, as you guys know, it is a blockbuster. It was launched in 2014, but I don't think it became popular until 2016. And that's when it kind of exploded and became super popular and just like everywhere you went, like women and even men were wearing this fragrance and they still do. It's an amber floral and the top is saffron, one of my favorite notes. Jasmine, one of my other favorite notes. In the middle is amberwood and ambergris, and the dry down is fear resin and cedar. Very chic, very sophisticated, very impressionable. Like this is something that when somebody wears it, you're like, oh, okay. I don't know if it's because it's so expensive. <laughs> and you're like, okay, this is like an expensive fragrance, but it definitely is something that leaves like a statement. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you enjoyed learning about my favorite fragrances for a wedding day. I mean, who knows, maybe I'll be wearing some of these on my wedding. You never know, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you have any suggestions for me, please share below. I do recommend layering your fragrances on your wedding day because you know I'm a layer lover, but I think that to make sure that you smell really unique, it's even better. Like take your favorite fragrances, you could pick three from today or 
three of your own favorites, layer them together, see if it works nicely, and try that. You know, as a bride, I would not go without layering my fragrances because I want to smell different. Like, what if somebody else has your perfume on? You don't want them to, you know, no, you want to smell unique. So definitely try to layer, layer up. And as always, I like to end each video with a quote. And of course, today's quote is going to be related to fragrances. And it's by Christopher Pondexter. And it says, nothing brings to life a forgotten memory like a fragrance. And I think that is so true. Even smelling today's fragrances, a lot of them took me back to like university, to like my earlier days when we were starting up business, like so many different memories. And as soon as I smelled the fragrances, it just transported me. So it was so magical. And I really hope you're able to use that magic on your wedding day so that you can always remember it and go back in time and revisit beautiful memories. Um, thank you so much guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Love you guys so much. Bye.